Okay, welcome back. Remember a few lectures back, we introduced the notion of a symmetric cipher and an asymmetric cipher. Let's talk a little bit more about those today and the difference between them. Okay, so what is the difference? A symmetric cipher is one in which the same key is used for encryption and for decryption. These are also called secret key ciphers. An asymmetric cipher is one in which different keys are used for encryption and decryption. And these are traditionally called public key algorithms. Okay, for any encryption system or any encryption approach, there are really two big problems that you've got to get over. You've got to get over key distribution and key management. Key management just means you've got all these keys floating around. How do you, how do you keep them straight and figure out you know, which key to use for which you know, uh, partner that you want to communicate with, for example. Key distribution is about uh, if we have to share a key secretly, how do I get the key from one partner to another or from a key server to both partners? Okay, so let me say a little bit about, more about asymmetric encryption because symmetric encryption is probably clear to everybody. So asymmetric or public key encryption uses different keys for encryption and for decryption. The idea is that you have a public key uh, that you, that's used for encryption, and you just distribute that freely to anybody who you think might want to communicate with you. And notice you don't have to keep it, to keep it secret. Why? Because the, if you encrypt with that key, the only way you can decrypt is by using the other key, which is called your private key, and you keep that close to the vest. That is, you don't let anybody see that. So that's a, that's a secret piece of information, right? And so the idea is that if you want, if you want, somebody wants to send a message to you, they encrypt it with your public key, and then only you can decrypt it, right? Okay. So in a sense, this largely solves the key distribution problem. Why? Because you remember that the key distribution problem is, if I don't have a secure channel, how do I get you the key secretly? But in, in public key systems, you don't need to get the key secretly to somebody. You just send it to them freely through the mail. And if somebody overhears it, no big deal. OK, well, let's talk about how many keys there are in these systems. So in a symmetric system, if you want to have pairwise secure communication, what does that mean? That means that you've got in parties and you want each pair of them to be able to communicate securely with, with the other member of that pair without anybody else overhearing it. Well, if you think about that, if you've got n minus one parties already in this click and you add an additional one, that additional one has to have a key that it shares with each of the previous n minus one partners. Okay, so what that means is that the number of keys within the system is going to be one if you have two, two, two uh, subjects within the system, and then, then it's going to be two for adding the third one, and then three for adding the fourth one, and four for adding the fifth one, and so on, right? So if you add up all those numbers, you see that the result is n times n minus one over two, where n is the number of parties. Uh, and that's uh, quadratic, right, because that's, that's order n squared. That means you're going to have a lot of keys if you've got a lot of uh, parties within this system. Okay, well how about asymmetric encryption? Remember there, each party has a public key which it disseminates widely and a private key. And so effectively, each party only has those two keys. It doesn't need to share keys individually with each of the other parties within, within the group. Okay, so what that means is that altogether there are only two n keys in this scenario, assuming that you have n parties. Now, it's true that in some uh, versions of, um, of public key encryption, you actually need two pairs for each person because you use one pair for people sending you stuff secretly and you use the other pair for signing for authentication, and we'll talk about that later. But that still means only four n keys, which is again, linear in the number of parties. Okay, so what are the characteristics of these keys? Typically, in a symmetric scenario, the key is just a randomly generated bit string. And what that means is it's very simple to generate. You just, you know, flip, uh, flip a coin or roll a die or, you know, have some other source of randomness. There's no special characteristics of that bit string. 
uh, except that it be random and unguessable. But in a public key system, typically the keys are involved in some sophisticated operations like exponentiation with large primes. And so the keys have some special structure. For example, they are themselves large primes. And so that means that it's much more expensive to generate them. And so that's why if you're generating a, a, a key set for uh, a public key system, that's a much more expensive operation than just generating a session key for a symmetric operation. Now, it's important also to remember that the sizes of keys in these two different ways of doing encryption mean very different things. So for example, in a symmetric uh, scenario, if you generate a key of say 128 bits, what's the key space there? Well, it's two to the 128. That's how many possible bit strings there are. And so it becomes very difficult to guess that. On the other hand, if you generate a public key of 128 bits, it's not gonna be very strong because the key space really isn't two to the 128 because most of that, most of those bit strings wouldn't be acceptable keys because say they're not large primes, right? So uh, people that have looked at this have said a 128 bit key in a symmetric scenario is approximately equal in, in security to a 3000 bit key in an asymmetric scenario. So you might imagine it's much harder to generate those second guys. Okay, so what have we said? Well, uh, in, in symmetric encryption, uh, if you want pairwise secure communication, that means generating a key, a separate key, for each individual pair of users within that group. But in asymmetric situations, each individual user just has to have two keys, or maybe four, the public key and the private key, and, and disseminate the public key widely and keep the private key uh, to itself. Okay, and keys within these two different approaches to cryptography have very different characteristics uh, in how hard they are to generate and how much security you get from a key of a particular length. Thanks.